Uh, hi guys, um, this is uh, a video illustration regarding the 7th theorem. As you are looking into my blog, Electrical uh, uh, Engineering uh, Tutorials in the library, uh, you are looking at this blog for uh, Thevenin's Theorem's um, explanation and uh, its application. It's actually a very simple theorem and it is widely used in um, both DC and AC circuits. Uh, what we will be discussing here is completely a DC circuit uh, to start with uh, for the simplicity and uh, the uh, clear understanding of the viewer uh, regarding the explanation. Uh, from what you can see here is just a simple voltage source connected with a resistor um, named as RTH and VTH. This is nothing but the uh, resistance, uh, equivalent resistance called as Thevenin's resistance. Uh, we will look into what's mean by that and how do you find in a given circuit. And this is VTH is, uh, stands for Thevenin's voltage. It's uh, 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 an independent voltage source. Here it is a DC source across two points A and B. These two points A and B are our reference point in the circuit. So what does the theorem state and what is the value uh, uh, of these two elements, this voltage and resistor, uh, what primary importance does they hold uh, and, and what are their applications. We will just look into that. Uh, before that we will just state this theorem, what does it state. It states that in any given electrical circuit, the circuit may be any given electrical circuit, it may be AC, it may be DC, any given electrical circuit, uh, for the uh, circuit can be reduced into an equivalent voltage source as shown here called the Thevenin's voltage connected in series uh, with uh, an equivalent resistance of the entire circuit um, called Thevenin's resistance placed across uh, any two given points in a circuit. These two points in a circuit can be anywhere and um, the equivalent Thevenin's resistance and the Thevenin's voltage when connected in series like this uh, can be placed across those, those two points as an equivalent part of the circuit and these two points or the reference point across which we need to study the circuit. Now why would we want to study the circuit? Uh, for that we'll just um, see the illustration uh, as we go on further. Here uh, you see this is a variable um, a resistance which is called a rheostat. Uh, this resistance can vary um, uh, depending on our setting. So the application of the Thevenin's theorem means um, uh, sometimes in a given uh, particular circuit, one particular element like this rheostat might change, keep changing its values. So this would affect the entire circuit. Here the circuit is just a simple voltage source, a resistance, and a rheostat. But this may not be the case in um, most of the circuits. You might you might be having more complex circuits with uh, four to five meshes. And you know what's mean by mesh. For example, this one particular closed loop is called a mesh. You might have um, uh, more than five or four meshes connected in a big huge circuit. Uh, in that circuit, when this one particular element keeps changing its value, uh, for example, this resistance keeps changing, the entire circuit changes. In the, uh, it affects the entire circuit in terms of uh, currents flowing dif through different branches of the circuit and the voltage is appearing at different nodes of the circuit. So, uh, in order to avoid uh, a repeated analysis of uh, the circuit each and every time this value changes, we can reduce the circuit down to an equivalent voltage source and an equivalent um, uh, resistance called Thevenin's resistance, connect them in series and place them across those two points across which the um, study is to be conducted and the study is conducted only across those two points where we have the variable element. So uh, this is what the theorem states and this is what the application is. We'll just see a broader application of this theorem uh, with a simple DC circuit, slightly more complex than this one having um, two or three meshes as follows. Uh, here we can see there is a, a DC circuit. This is a given DC circuit with the same kind of uh, a variable uh, resistance element. It's basically a rheostat with a range from 1 to 7 kilo ohms. And this is connected in parallel with 3 kilo ohms uh, uh, resistance. And um, here are the two points A and B which we are talking about. Uh, these two points are nothing but the points across the uh, um, uh, variable uh, resistance, across which the variable resistance is connected. And there is 1 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm resistance connected in parallel. Both is connected in series with these two uh, parallel combinations and a 5 voltage, uh, 5 volts uh, DC uh, independent voltage source. 
this is given as a pure DC circuit. Uh, so in this we have to apply the um, Thevenin's theorem. So let us go back and see what's the definition. Here we stated that in any that any given electrical circuit can be reduced to an independent voltage source called uh, Thevenin's voltage VTH and a resistance called Thevenin's resistance RTH connected in series uh, um, across those two points A and B uh, across which we have to conduct the study and here we are conducting study across these two points because our variable element is this each time it varies for instance first time it is 1 kilo ohms and the next time we increase the resistance of this rheostat from 1 to 2 kilo ohms the second case when it is 2 or 3 kilo ohms it is going to affect the entire circuit resistance and the current flow through different branches of the circuit so we need not um, uh, uh, reduce the circuit and analyze for the branch currents each and every time the value changes instead of that uh, except for this element keeping this aside we can find the equivalent voltage appearing across these two points and the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit up, um, appearing across these two points that's what the Thevenin theorem states but we have to connect the equivalent resistance appearing across the, those two points in series with the voltage source that appears across those two points in short what I was saying that the element across which we have to conduct the study across that we have to find the entire circuit's voltage appearing and the entire circuit's resistance appearing connect them both in series across those two points and have the circuit reduce, reduced like something like this now how do we do that? There are two simple steps to do that. First find the um, uh, Thevenin's voltage called VTH and then uh, find the Thevenin's resistance called RTH. So uh, the uh, process uh, how we are going to do that is explained as follows. It is um, uh, as such when uh, you see the circuit like this, uh, here the variable element is basically a rheostat as I said a while back. So we have to find this Thevenin's voltage and the Thevenin's resistance across these two points A and B. So this is uh, not of uh, any of our concern. So we can remove this element and keep it aside as of now. Uh, so that we can be concerned only about the voltage and the resistance is appearing across these two points so after removing that this is how it would be uh, appearing uh, as, as as if it is open circuit so first you open circuit that and then apply any of the techniques to find uh, the voltage uh, uh, source uh, and the resistance appearing across these two points now by uh, means of any of techniques means we can uh, uh, use a simple technique here called network reduction where you just uh, uh, add the uh, resistances in series and parallel and find the equivalent resistance across these two points and the voltage by a uh, volt simple voltage divider theorem as follows uh, in order to apply that we just see here these two resistances are in parallel when you add those two resistances in parallel it is the total resistance is just 1 by RT which is total is equal to uh, the addition of the inverse of these two resistances which when um, brought to a simple term it is nothing but uh, uh, the reciprocal and the total resistance calculated as such as 667 ohms now this is RT and it is uh, in series with the 3 kilo ohms but there is a point taken out from here so this voltage 5 um, uh, volts appear across both these resistances this uh, is the most reduced form of the network this cannot be reduced further just because we have a, um, a, a node taken out from here for our rheostat so since this point uh, exists these two even though are series cannot be summed up because there is a different element connected across these uh, uh, three kilo ohms resistance and here a point is taken out so these two even though they are in series cannot be summed up uh, and added up directly because there is a point taken out from here so this is the last reduced network and we have a 5 volt um, a DC independent source appearing across these two uh, series um, uh, resistances one point from here another point from here it is completely in series uh, it is appearing um, uh, uh, across these two uh, resistances. So by voltage divider theorem you can find the voltage across the 3 kilo ohms resistance which would be uh, directly the voltage appearing across the points uh, A and B as well because those two are in parallel. The points A and B are in parallel with these two points. So when we find the voltage across these two points that is which is simply nothing but the voltage appearing across the 3 kilo ohms by voltage divider theorem we find the voltage uh, equivalent voltage appearing across these two points 
which is our aim actually which is nothing but a thevenin's uh, uh, voltage no uh, now how do you find that is illustrated as here my voltage divided theorem if the total voltage appearing across the two series elements is 5 volts then the voltage appearing across each element is nothing but that element into the 5 volts divided by the summation of the entire resistance in series that's nothing but 4.1 volts as calculated so this 4.1 volts is nothing but thevenin's voltage since it's the same voltage that's going to appear across these two points a and b which is our point uh, reference points of study now uh, when we move further we see about the uh, thevenin's resistance computation which is nothing but the resistance appearing across these two points now one thing that the viewer has to keep in mind that when we are keeping these two points as reference and computing the thevenin's resistance what we have to do is neglect all the sources each time we calculate their equivalent resistance across our reference point of study uh, in any theorem uh, the equivalent resistance means we are concerned only with the equivalent resistance and not about the sources so the sources are neglected now how to neglect the sources if it is a voltage source we would simply uh, short it with a wire uh, so that the zero volt uh, appears this is just a wire connected here instead of five volts which means that we have shorted both the plates and there is no voltage there is no um, potential appearing across those two points they are short circuited and there is no five volts here and the rest remaining the same now it is a simple uh, resistor network where we can reduce it by, by a parallel addition which uh, the equivalent resistance which is RTH which would appear across these two points A and B is nothing but a, uh, a set of parallel addition which is nothing but the reciprocal of the total RTH appearing as these two points A and B is the, is the summation of the reciprocal of each and every element which turns out to be so much and which is inversed gives 545 ohms across the points A and B so this is our uh, equivalent thevenin's resistance so how do you do that take those two reference points and we are concerned only about the resistances not the sources so if there is a voltage circuit short circuited and if there is a current source you just have to open circuit it and keeping those uh, conditions as ideal you compute the um, equivalent network resistance across these two points it is nothing but the thevenin's resistance represented as rth and simple parallel addition gives the value as 545 ohms in this case as we move further uh, the last step that we have to do as the thevenin theorem states is um, uh, after finding the rth and vth what we have to do is keep those two elements in series and apply it across the reference points a and b those are those two points um, across which the uh, variable resistance was connected and those were those two points um, uh, across which we are going to conduct our study so those were, those were the uh, reference points for our study since the uh, variable element was connected across those two points and troubling the circuit each and every time the value changes so in order to uh, be less bothered about uh, the circuit we have reduced the circuit to an equivalent voltage source and an equivalent resistance uh, named as VTH and RTH and connected them in series and placed them across these um, two points uh, reference points of our study um, uh, which goes by the definition of the uh, Thevenin's uh, uh, theorem uh, so uh, after doing that what we can do if we are um, keeping this value as 545 which is as such the equivalent resistance of the entire DC circuit except this element uh, and the voltage is 4.1 volt which appears across these two points you can compute the current which emerges from this particular um, source which means uh, in this circuit uh, the uh, primary form of the circuit, the actual uh, form which was here, this this was our entire circuit. So, uh, without being concerned about the entire circuit, we can directly compute uh, the value of the current which is uh, emerging from this point. Uh, we have named that as IT, as you can see here, this is IT emerging from this voltage source, is 4.1 volts but the total uh, volts uh, when you see here in the original circuit is 5 volts 
however the current the total current emerging from that part uh, would be computed as it uh, when we talk about the equivalent voltage source and that can be computed and each and every time the uh, uh, resistance of this rheostat is changed uh, we can directly use this it uh, to compute the voltage drops across different element and how much current would flow through this one uh, directly the current which will flow through this would be just it emerging from this 4.1 poles we can just have this fixed at one particular value and compute this i uh, t so this is r t h as of now the current without these two points if it were short circuited the uh, i t would be uh, just uh, um, v t h by r t h plus uh, r variable if these two uh, points were not short circuited and this resistance rheostat still uh, appears across those two points as uh, a particular value say for example we set it to 1 kilo ohm the least resistance path and uh, this is 1 kilo ohms and this is 545 it is as good as 0.545 kilo ohms uh, this is the total resistance across the path of the voltage and when this is connected the circuit and switched on the current the total current that will flow it is just simply v by r which is nothing but v by the total resistance and this 2.65 milliamps so the uh, total current that would flow uh, through the circuit through this rheostat for one particular given resistance at one particular time can be computed by dividing the voltage uh, with uh, these two resistances added up totally so each and every time in order to find the current uh, across this uh, um, uh, element without connecting an ammeter theoretically what you can do is find uh, an equivalent voltage and an equivalent resistance and place across it and then um, compute uh, the total current flowing and that would be the current which will flow through the stereo stack uh, if you want don't want to uh, uh, use the circuit practically and connect an ammeter an ammeter is a current me measuring uh, device if you want to avoid using an ammeter uh, across these two points and uh, test the circuit uh, for practical uh, if you want to avoid doing that and if you want to find the value of the current for uh, the uh, particular given resistance of the stereo stat theoretically if you want to do that theoretically then this is how you do it and this is just one of the method uh, the other method is called the uh, Norton's theorem which uses the same method but instead of the voltage source it will be a current source placed in parallel with the resistance here what we are doing in the uh, Thevenin's uh, voltage theorem simply it's called a Thevenin's theorem we are placing an equivalent voltage source in series with a given resistance equivalent uh, across these two points which is our reference point of study across which the variable element is connected and finding um, the total current um, uh, assuming different cases of the resistance of the rheostat each and every time uh, by a very simple Ohm's law formula after reducing the circuit completely down to a simple mesh uh, so we don't have to worry about the entire circuit which uh, uh, was looking something like uh, uh, this which was the actual circuit each and every time you have to just fix uh, the uh, resistance in, at one particular value say for example 2 kilo ohms or 3 kilo ohms then reduce the network each and every time and then find the uh, current at last uh, through the re rheostat instead of doing that you can just directly come to this uh, reduced uh, circuit as here just change the value and apply this formula and find the current in just one single step without using an ammeter theoretically by using the theorem of Thevenin which is nothing but Thevenin's voltage theorem uh, the next time uh, the tutorial would be regarding uh, Norton's theorem which is which has the same purpose or let's say similar purpose by using a current source and how to do that and how to compute the equivalent current source and how to place it will be uh, discussed in the next video tutorial uh, until next time goodbye